Today we are going to work on a journal lesson inspired by New York City. So I'm going to go through my supplies. I have my delusions journals. Um, this is kind of an 8 by 10 size. I have um, some of my felt markers in here. Um, some of the brands um, are out there are Copic, um, but this one is just an artist loft from Michaels. Um, but you can see there's that finer tip kind of brush side and then more of a marker side to them. Um, I have my black ink. I have a calligraphy pen that also has ink in it, um, but I may dip it. And then more of a Japanese style brush. Um, and then a variety of brush, paint brushes in case I want to use it for my ink um, or bring in some watercolors, my micron pens. And I have a bunch of different colored pencils. And this is kind of a new one um, for me that sees um, Stabilo pens. Um, and then a white gel uh, pen as well as some gouache. As I move on, I will narrow down my palette to fit in with New York City. So I recently took a trip to the city. So I uh, have a combination here of some photographs from Unsplash as well as my own uh, photographs. And when I get back to my studio, let's say I haven't done much artwork on the go, um, I love to gather my photographs and then come back to my studio and get inspired. Um, some of these areas are from the Hudson Yards. Um, we have kind of the edge building and a view from the edge. Um, of course, we have the Statue of Liberty, um, some of these kind of brownstones that can really, we're all over, um, art museums, um, you know, some of those iconic buildings like the Chrysler Building um, can be pulled into here as well. Um, so really combine um, just a variety of photos. In this artist travel series, I'm going to go quickly through things. Um, if you want more in-depth lessons, you can always join one of our classes where we go more into technique and art history. Um, but my goal here is to come in with my pencil and just kind of map out some of these buildings. Um, this vis vessel building in Hudson Yards is really complicated, but I will come in with my mixed media um, and different elements to really define them. And then kind of coming on with that honeycomb look um, and then coming in and just kind of quickly drawing the Statue of Liberty. Again, I'm not worried so much in my journals about um, perfection. Um, I really am working towards loosening up, connecting to my travels, and then bringing some of these journal spreads into ideas of larger pieces um, or get inspired by palettes um, and just kind of use them as memories and guidelines and ways to practice my own art and play with new mediums. So I always have my artist travel uh, bag that's on my blog, but I've added quite a few um, of quite a few new mediums here. Um, and really as an artist, I think we all love to experiment and we like to play. Um, so I'm going to try out this pen. I actually haven't tried it yet. This is my Stabilo pen. Um, this is a new line that I haven't seen before and just start coming over um, some of these pencil marks and define um, some of these features a little bit more. Um, I want kind of an illustrative look to this. So I'm going to be working with that black, um, you know, balanced out or contrasted with some vibrant colors. Um, New York City is a lot, you know, it's not like a Barcelona with really bright colors. Um, there's a lot of grays, a lot of blues, a lot of metallic silvers, blacks. Um, but then it set itself off in the summertime when I visited with all the clothing. Um, there's still, you know, a lot of black worn. Um, but you see, I saw a lot of neons. Um, there was flowers on the sides of buildings. Um, so, you know, you really bring in that aspect of summer. So I'm going to bring in a really playful kind of neon palette here um, as I move on. But just define some of these features bring in your pen. Um, you know, I love playing with different mediums in my art journal. I will speed this up as I kind of draw out and map out these things. Um, but one of my
my favorite journals to do when I get back is to kind of capture um, elements or attractions that I had visited on my trip. Um, and you could do several spreads. I mean, we went to so many places in a short amount of time in New York City, um, but just highlighting some of those moments, um, highlighting the Statue of Liberty. We went to um, this Italian restaurant, which was one of our favorites, where we had wonderful conversations um, with a couple that we had just met. So, you know, trying to bring in some various elements that just kind of stuck out to me. Um, and I could do, once again, multiple, multiple spreads with the amount of places and things that we did on this trip. Um, but it's a great way to kind of connect and remember the places you've been and, you know, really connect your art practice to the city and your own experience. So coming in with my, you know, felt tip markers, I'm coming in with color pencils. I'm coming in with markers. Um, crayons is a great one. You know, anything you have on hand, you don't have to be using specifically what I have. Um, and then I love coming in with black ink as well. Um, keep in mind that the black ink can smear a little bit um, as you're working, but it gives it kind of that loose, sketchy look to it um, where it's not so defined like a pen um, and gives it a little bit more illustrative uh, as opposed to illustrative feel, a little bit more artistic feel. On this trip specifically, we were serious tourists. I have been to New York City before, um, done some of the touristy thing, then done more of a lo local um, kind of feel. But I had my small kids, and this is the first time they've ever been to the city. So we really did head up some of those you know, iconic, um, you know, touristy buildings. Um, first time they had rode the subway in New York City. Um, we went to the Hudson Yards and saw the edge, um, which you can really see an incredible, incredible view of the entire city. Um, in this area, there's also the vessel, um, which is that honeycomb shape. Um, you can go to the shed and see some shows or art displays, tons and tons of galleries. We went to um, the Central Park Zoo. We explored the carousel at Central Park. Um, there's so much to do. Um, we couldn't even explore it in a full year. Um, but just giving, giving them a taste of the city, going to a show, we went to the Lion King. So this gives you an idea of some of the other things that I could be putting in my journals. Um, you know, what are the memories that you have? Sometimes it's as simple as, like I said, putting this Italian restaurant, um, where we really connected with, um, a couple from the UK. Um, so, you know, there's so many different routes that you can go and get inspired by your travels. And this is kind of one of my favorite ways is just to kind of collage all of these different areas. And by no means are these all located next to each other, but it's kind of a collage, um, if you will, of my memories. But just by using for this one, my own drawing and painting, um, you could absolutely come in with some ephemera that you collected on your trip. Um, but for now, I'm sticking, um, you know, I've got a lot of supplies, but they, they all very simple things that I could travel with. Um, but I just happened to take photographs and get inspired when I got back to my studio. Now with this ink, you can also be moving it around and using shading if you add water to it, which I love. Um, and then it works almost like a watercolor, um, which is a great way to add value and depth to your journal spread. I also love countering like a building, an architectural um, drawing with kind of a detail. Like this is a detail of, of that building that really does have that kind of honeycomb look. Um, lots of different glass, lots of different angles. Um, so, you know, bring in some details. Um, right next to that restaurant, I could put, you know, a drawing of what we ate or um, maybe the table or a close-up of a plate um, and the patterning or the patterning on the curtains. So it just gives you a lot of different ideas of where you can draw inspiration. 
travel journals don't have to all be buildings. They can be really personal to your own trip and your own travels. Now, I would absolutely recommend going to this area. Um, as I said, the edge um, is this tall kind of pizza slice building um, that you go out and it's this entirely surrounded by glass and you get to see the whole scope of New York City. Um, you can see all the buildings from up high. Um, I would do that early on in a trip and that way you can really start kind of seeing all of the buildings, where they are and where it is that maybe you want to um, go explore a little bit more. Um, so, you know, just really bring in your own style. Um, I kind of picked again a palette that kind of embraced that kind of black and white and silvers um, and then, you know, balanced it out with these kind of neon colors that I was seeing throughout the city in the clothing and attire. Don't be afraid to be playful. A journal is a place to explore materials, experiment. Um, some of these materials are new to me. Um, so I'm doing a lot of play in these journals. Um, and then I can go in and create an oil painting or an acrylic painting or go further in depth into my journal spreads, um, maybe narrowing down um, some of the materials that I want to use or that I like the very most. Play with patterns, play with values, play with layering. Here I'm layering a bunch of different things that aren't next to each other to kind of create the illusion of that kind of crowdedness and busyness that you get from New York City. Um, you know, it's it's building, layered, uh, over building, um, especially I noticed through my kids' eyes how overwhelming it can be sometimes. They thought it was loud. They were exhausted. Um, there was lots and lots of noise and energy um, that, you know, they thrived on and also got exhausted by. So, um, you know, remember those kind of things and start to bring that into your um, journal spread. So by making, I want to make it busy, I'm going to create a lot of patterns. I'm going to bring in a lot of mediums to really, really create that same livening, liveliness and vividness that we are feeling through the city. continuing to come in with all these different mediums, bringing in different patterns, especially in the background with these windows. Um, again, New York is just layered and layered with buildings. So you're going to get a lot of reflection. You're going to get a lot of different design pattern in the architecture all surrounding you. So lots and lots of different shapes um, so and lots of detail all around you. Um, another fun thing to do is do some writing in it. You can write about your travels. You can write um, the places so that you remember them. Sometimes I even, you know, attach menus in of places we've been so that I don't forget some of my favorite restaurants um, or things that we did, such as museums or attractions. Because um, you will be amazed, at least I am, at you know, five years from now, I, f I forget. Um, and, you know, if you take a good amount of photographs, that helps, but it also helps to kind of art journal and journal these um, locations and places that you've been um, so that you remember. You could absolutely be working in plain air, 
on site, um, studying these buildings on the go. And there's times I do that. Um, I am at the point right now with young children that um, we just, we're on the go so much that I really have to be present for them. So my goal as I'm traveling is to really experience, get the full experience for them and for myself, um, and take lots and lots of photographs. That being said, I will take some notes here and there about the places that we've been so that when I get back to my studio, I can include those in my art journals. Um, but play around with it. Play around with doing some plein air painting on your next trip um, and see if it fits well for you and your lifestyle. Or if you are like me at this point and you prefer to just kind of come back and gather your inspiration from wherever you have visited. My goal with this Artist Travel Days series is to continue to explore more and more places through different mediums. These will be short lessons or prompts to inspire you. And if you want more in-depth learning technique, art history, then go visit our website for some of our Art Passports classes and look for some of our new mini classes to come soon. As always, I am so grateful that you have followed me along this journey and I can't wait to see what you create from some of these lessons. Let's go explore this world through art. Thank you so much.